Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing a tutorial for how to create extreme uh, head morphs for standard iClone characters. For the purpose of this tutorial we're going to use the G5 uh, Chuck just because he's uh, the G5 head has uh, a lot of good uh, bones um, in it for the, the rigging that we can then in turn use the new 3D Exchange pipeline with the, uh, the head morphs to create custom characters for uh, morphing in real-time animation. So we're going to just go through and as you see I've loaded the Chuck character onto our screen. For the tutorial I'm going to get rid of his hair uh, just because obviously I want to be able to see the, uh, the head morphs that we're going to apply um, for this character. So we're going to go ahead and take him out into 3D Exchange, and this is the the new 3D Exchange uh, pipeline with the uh, the head morph capability. So I'm going to bring him in to our scene here, and as you'll see, you have your Chuck loaded with the uh, standard iClone setup for animation. So if we want to go ahead and take a look at the the character. In here you have the Reillusion face in our expression editor. It's uh, preloaded and as a result you'll see it has all of the actual uh, different morphs and movements already applied uh, on the character itself. And what we're going to do as opposed to just manipulating these individual bones that you see here in the face, we're going to be doing more of an extreme uh, head morph and by that I'm talking about the actual mesh itself of Chuck's head so his ears his head itself chin cheeks that type of thing so that you can get in real time a, a whole bunch of different uh, head morphs uh, as many as you'd like really on one character that then you can apply in real time back in iClone so we're going to be focusing on this custom tab now as you'll see here there are no um, additional uh, morphs listed here um, as uh, we don't have any created as of yet. So we want to go ahead and focus down here and create our own new morph list off of this base head. So we're going to start with the, the Reillusion face and you're going to drop down. Once you highlight that you're going to see the replace mesh uh, component here which is what we want to do and we're going to leave it with the Y up and we're going to export the mesh itself and it's going to go ahead and save the the model as the Reillusion face which is perfectly fine for our purposes so we're going to go ahead and save that I already have obviously an instance of it saved so it's asking me to overwrite it which is fine so I'm going to go ahead and click click uh, OK now the editor that I'm going to use my personal preference is ZBrush you can go ahead and use whatever modeling software uh, you utilize, whether it's uh, Hexagon or uh, or uh, Blender, even uh, and whatever you feel that you're is going to be um, useful for you for modifying the the mesh itself. Uh, again, for me, that would be a ZBrush itself. So we're going to go ahead into the um, import tab. As you can see here, I already had a uh, a document loaded, so I'll just go ahead and create a new document for this purpose so that way you can see it from scratch for those of you that do happen to use ZBrush as well it's going to double a little bit for you as far as how we uh, we operate in here so we're going to go ahead and import now our Reillusion face model which is the base chuck unedited at this point it's now in our toolbar we're going to just drag so that's a left click and drag it, uh, the head out onto the screen itself. I want to make sure that we click edit so that we can in turn edit the uh, the face and then we're going to bring it into the frame here so we can take a look at it. All right, so one of the, uh, the shapes that I want to do for the chuck head is I'm thinking about doing a, a I guess mad scientist type look would be a good way of doing it. So I want to have a big extended head on chuck so we're going to go ahead and select our move brush which is a right click on the brush palette and you'll see the the different uh, brushes that you can utilize in ZBrush itself 
and again, for this purpose itself, we're doing the, the move brush, which is the one that we already have uh, highlighted. Now, we do want to uh, apply the symmetry, so that's under the transform tab, and we have our activate symmetry, and that way it's going to pull on the same sides. So I can increase my brush size fairly largely here because I want it to be able to pull the, the head itself up. And as you'll see, the mesh itself of Chuck's entire head is really kind of stretching out into a very oblong kind of uh, shape for us that we're going to be utilizing. And there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. Um, you can apply a mask and use this uh, doing an inflate process. But this is just for the purpose, again, of, uh, of just showing you how to um, estimate different and apply different uh, morphs to the mesh itself for that one we're going to use back in iClone. So there we've got a pretty good big cranial look for the, uh, the chuck base mesh. So we're going to go ahead and just export this back out. And as opposed to overwriting the original face, I'm just going to call this a Reillusion Face 1 object. And again, I've had several instances of these, and we're going to go ahead and save that into our folder. And then you'll notice when we drop back into 3D Exchange, and we go under the Expression Editor, then we have the Reillusion Face. We're going to click this Add button because we're going to add a morph now to our character. And it's going to open up our folder, and we're going to pull out the file that we just renamed Reillusion Face 1 OBJ and as you see then when we highlight that's going to show the actual now head morph so there's the original and now we have the full body big head morph that we're going to then be able to apply back in Reillusion so for I'll do another one just so that you can uh, see that process again we'll just jump right back into ZBrush and I'm going to just get rid of the actual morphs that I created I'm just control Zing those ones so that way we can uh, we can bring it back to the the base mesh and so for this one let's manipulate the uh, the ears a little bit we'll turn Chuck into kind of a an orky type character and again you can apply your own uh, morphs in uh, detail take your time doing it uh, but this is for the purpose of, of how to do it not the actual um, modeling of it per se. So we want a bit of a bigger nose for him to give it that more animal type look. And I want to bring down his brow to give him kind of a more of a, a goblin-y, evil-y type of uh, appearance that we're just going to do. And again, these are just uh, rough models out that, uh, that we're doing it very quickly in this purpose. And maybe we'll drag his chin out a bit here like that. So we'll again export this and I'm going to save this as uh, the Reillusion face and I'm going to apply the number 2 to it. So that way you can see obviously I'm doing this sequentially just uh, that's my nomenclature for it just so I have can easily track it. We'll save it again and then we will go back to our 3D exchange and again we're going to add the morph. We'll pull out our face 2 is the OBJ file and now you'll see our morph gets applied. So now we have our standard, we have our mad scientist and we have our face two which is our orky type character um, all on Chuck's face. Now we want to be able to bring these back into iClone and be able to morph him and morph his whole head in real time. To do that we're going to go now into the expression editor and as you can see now on the, uh, the custom tab which is where we can apply the mouse movement to it. These different options, the two faces that we had, face one and face two, those two morphs now show up. So when we click on, let's say, the upward motion, I'm going to apply the Reillusion face one uh, as the full, and make sure you don't forget to click set because that uh, actually applies the uh, the morph itself. And as you can see, our Chuck character has the now the weird scientist head. And then to the right motion, I'm going to then apply our orc character uh, and press set. So now those are now applied directly onto the Chuck character and our facial motions. So we have the different, and again, you can do any number of them uh, that, uh, that you feel like and, uh, and have patience to do. And then we're going to go ahead and just bring Chuck 
back into iClone with the apply to iClone button and he's going to go ahead and now load in our stage. So now we've got our standard Chuck but with extreme facial head morph capability in real time and through that we're going to access the animation tab and the facial animation and by going to the puppet tab we're going to select our 3D custom uh, tab within the puppeteering panel I'm just going to turn off the actual head rotation scenario so now when I want to preview my uh, motions if you'll see Chuck we've got a regular Chuck and then with our motions by using the mo mouse motion, uh, motion uh, right we can create our orc character and by pushing up we can create our mad scientist type character and these now can be applied in the middle of your animation if you're doing a conversion uh, to have you know some type of, uh, of dream sequence or have uh, Chuck convert into a, uh, a, a crazy monster of some kind that you've created um, or if uh, you know you're doing a morph scene where you're creating a, you know a fight scene where his nose is getting broken and you want it off skewed you could do the same type of thing by adjusting the uh, the the morphs themselves to have different snares or swell up his eye uh, using that type of a, of a technique as well. So I hope you found that uh, that useful and uh, you can use the that process to create again any number of head morphs that you can then apply in real time during your animation with uh, full puppeteering mouse control.